Welcome back to Finance News, where we bring you a week's worth of the best stories in the business, finance, and the stock market. I've done all of the work for you, which means you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Let's get straight into your headlines from around the world. In one of the biggest stories this week, Elon Musk revealed that he'd taken a stake in Twitter. The Tesla boss announced this week through filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission that he'd been buying stock in the social media platform, taking him to be the largest single shareholder in the company. The buying frenzy for Musk takes his share of the company to 9.2%, with purchases made totaling $2.9 billion. After the news was made public this week, the stock in the company rallied 26% in pre-market trading, netting the Tesla CEO a cool $600 million profit it, although there's no plans to sell the shares just yet. In response to the move, Twitter CEO Parag Agrawal also announced that Musk had already been in communication with the company and secured himself a seat on the board until the next meeting in 2024. The news sent speculators and commentators wild with what Elon's intentions might be, everything from adding the edit button to reinstating the former president Donald Trump, who was currently banned from the platform. Musk had previously stated that he did not think Twitter was adhering to free speech principles and views the platform as a key forum, often dropping important announcements via the site as first port of call. In other Tesla news, Musk hosted an official opening party at the new Giga factory in Austin, Texas this week. The founder personally addressed thousands of invited guests to the new factory, showing guests a glimpse of the new Cybertruck and Tesla Semi, which was promised for 2023. Musk said that the company is going to scale like no company's ever achieved in the history of humanity, promised a future dedicated robo-taxi, as well as saying that the Tesla robot named Optimus will create an age of abundance that's going to transform the world even to a bigger extent than cars did. Skynet is officially coming to a place near you, just make sure you look busy otherwise you'll get fired or liquefied. I can't remember which one it is. I'll be back. The markets have had a turbulent week this week, riding high from the rally in the weeks before. Wall Street has been left mulling over the minutes released from the last Federal Reserve Monetary Committee meeting. The main market indexes saw a squeeze this week as investors focus on Governor Brainard's comments regarding tightening the easing money supply through asset purchases. The comments alluded to further hikes in interest rates, moving by 0.5% each time, rather than the already assumed quarter percentage points baked in by investor sentiment. The Fed is under pressure to reduce the effects of high inflation on the economy, whilst maintaining stability as threats of a recession and stagflation looms. Investors wait with bated breath to see how the central banks start to offload their hefty balance sheet of long-term US government bonds, which now stands at over $8 trillion. In an article from Forbes this week, Robinhood revealed to the world what its most popular purchases were under its recurring buy feature. The popular commission-free trading platform, which IPO'd in 2021, revealed that its users are most interested into dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin above all other assets on the platform. Investors of whom around 50% of first time traders have shown that they prefer crypto assets over many others and three out of the top traded assets exist in the digital world. Outside of Bitcoin, Ethereum came in a close second, followed by the meme token Dogecoin, which sits firmly between exchange traded funds for the S&P 500. The most popular companies purchased regularly were Apple, Tesla, Amazon and Microsoft, with Apple being the single most popular company, sitting just behind Bitcoin in the popularity of its users. Some news closer to home now, in the UK, salaries are soaring at their fastest rate since 1997. According to the latest report on jobs from KPMG and REC, the average salary awarded to new permanent joiners climbed more in March than at any time since records began back in October 1997. The consultancy firms commented on the results saying that pay growth continued to run around 4%, reflecting a strong demand for staff and widely reported candidate shortages. However, as much as a pay rise sounds good, many people are still left with a fall in real disposable incomes as the cost of living crisis hits household budgets. Rising utility bills from the cost of energy as well as tax hikes coming into play this month will see many people losing out even with a bump in take-home pay. They also noted that the proportion of people who are not seeking employment but would still take a job has remained at its lowest level on record. I'm not really sure how that works, I'm confused. So you kind of want a job but you don't mind. Weird, 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 all of it weird. Unfortunately, it's misery for holidaymakers during the popular Easter season this week as British Airways and EasyJet cancel dozens of flights. The airlines have been cutting daily flights to the dismay of passengers on a last minute basis as they blame staff shortages and COVID related absences. Airports are also feeling the pinch as they deal with the increased passenger demands with limited resources and staff. Manchester and Leeds airport bosses have both apologised to customers and wrote that they're committed to getting passengers away on their trips, but now recommend getting to the airport at least three hours before your flight to deal with increasingly long queues. There's nothing worse than queuing at the airport once you get back home, is there? In markets this week, FTSE 100 shareholders are set to have a bumper year of cash in 2022. The leading London index of some of the country's biggest companies are set to deliver investors 5.4% back to investors this year. 
totaling more than £114 billion, the equivalent of $150 billion. If forecasts hold for the year, this would make it the second best year ever for cash returns on the FTSE 100 with increased share buybacks, dividends and special one-off dividend payments. Previous best year came in 2018 when shareholders received £127 billion made up of £85 billion of dividends, £7.4 billion from special dividends and buybacks worth a whopping £34 billion. Of the top 100 firms, 97 are expected to pay a dividend this year compared to the 91 in 2021 and 29 firms have so far this year announced share buyback schemes to boost returns to shareholders. The biggest hitters in the space are expected to be Rio Tinto, the mining giant, closely followed by the oil company Shell, and then Swiss miner Glencore not too far behind. Profits this year will be heavily swayed by the increases in commodity prices around the world caused by supply chain disruptions and increased demand from consumers and businesses. On screen now you'll see all the expected 2022 dividend payments from the top companies. Feel free to pause and take some notes. And finally in news this week, bonds are taking a hammering as weary investors seek better returns. According to the Times, retail investors withdrew £2.35 billion out of bonds and bond funds in February after being spooked by the surge in inflation. The moves marked one of the largest in record as investors move away from fixed income securities in response to the higher inflation and the fears of interest rate rises too. Retail investors have had about £308 billion invested in bond funds, which have become enormously popular over the past two decades, with low inflation and falling interest rates bolstering returns. The withdrawals make it the worst month for the asset management industry since records began in 2002. The worst was March 2020, when the pandemic led to a record net outflow of almost £10 billion. The only bonds I like are secret agents, to be honest. All the rest are rubbish. You must be bond. Guy came along for the ride. And now that's all of our main headlines, so a quick trip over to the fails of the week where I look at the stories which remind us that we're all human. Just when you think it couldn't get any worse, fails of the week. The popular game Axie Infinity saw itself the victim of a hack recently with victims losing a total of $625 million worth of crypto assets. The popular game created by company Sky Mavis is a play to earn game where gamers battle it out with characters and can earn rewards paid out in game tokens with value in the real world. The loss of funds came from a hack of the company and the Ronin network with most of the money being drained through an exploit in the network itself but also taking hundreds of millions of dollars from the company treasury too. In response to the hack that was disclosed last month, the company announced this week that they'd raise $150 million from investors to put forward towards compensating players, which would allow players to withdraw money that had been frozen since the attack. Many players rely on the income from the game, which has seen its cryptocurrency value soar, making it a lucrative business for players in developing countries, which can see players earn enough money to buy new homes and go full-time with the game. As the game's grown in popularity, billions of dollars worth of transactions have taken place using the in-game currency, Axie tokens, which are needed as prerequisite for playing the game itself. Each token is currently valued around $53, down from its highs of $160 in July 2021. Initially, the coins had only been valued around $4 until their popularity took off, netting many people multi-million dollar fortunes. So if you're thinking about side hustles and know how you can make money whilst on the loo, this might be the game for you. And now we're back in the physical world, let's close with our final section, which sees me trawl through the depths of Reddit's Wall Street bets to bring you the best memes of the week. Welcome to the best of the bets. I don't think this first one could be left out after all of the Elon news this week, as a tribute to all the Karens in the world who like to complain to the manager of shops, this changes things slightly when you have enough money to buy the whole shop outright and get a seat on the board. He does look great with that hair, it really suits him though. Next up, as a long-term investor, I've learned that you inverse Kramer. It's the phenomenon that says anytime he says to buy something, you sell it as you end up making a profit. So I'm always worried if he says hold on to everything right now. Is that finally the signal we needed to sell everything? Maybe this will break the cycle. Who knows? Remember, when we say you need to invest because cash is trash and inflation is eating away your money, well, sometimes we forget to give a timescale on that and things don't look so good when the market does crash. However, if you are down 98% in the current market, you really need to take a look at what you're investing in and stop following popular YouTube finance stock pickers. And finally, here's one for the technical traders. You know how there are more patterns and star signs with funny names like double bottoms and twin peaks? Well, what about the meow pattern? Is this a bullish pattern or bearish? I can't decide yet. Maybe the chart you'll draw in with a tail in the future. I'll let the idiots who draw lines decide what this means. For now though, it's time for us to have our own breakout. On that awful pun, thanks for watching. Don't forget to drop me a like on the way out. Subscribe for more news every week. And in the meantime, as always, happy investing.